Hi, I'm Randy Hildebrandt. I'm here at Kimmel Park in Mill City, Oregon for the 4th of July event. This is the 3rd of July today. We're doing the, uh, uh, the evolution of the saw. And I've been collecting chainsaws for all 35 years now and uh, crosscut saws. So we have an event today. It's the evolution of the saw where we start out with crosscut saws and we go to an old uh, Wade drag saw in my background over here. And then from the Wade drag saw, we're gonna go to a two-man chainsaw, a distant to a one-man chainsaw. So this is the beginning of uh, our event right here over here at the CrossCut saw. We start out over here. This is Arden Corey from Mill City. He's uh, set a world record uh, uh, on a um, doing a crosscut event back in 1976. How long? How wide of a log was that? It was 30 inches. 30 inches, and he did it in how many seconds? 32.1. 32.1 <laughs> seconds. That's quite a record. He's going to do a little demonstration. This is called single bucking on uh, with a crosscut saw here. And go ahead and show him what you got going on here. Okay. You want me to finish it? Nope, you can stop the video off. You just want to get a little demonstration here. And just, yeah. Unless you want to finish it. I'm getting pretty close now. Oh, yeah, I'm okay, we'll watch this before he had to finish it for him. All right. <laughs> good job, Arden. So, Arden uh, not only uh, is very good at this, he is a professional uh, crosscut saw filer. And, um, when I worked at FedEx, they sent saws from all over the country to have him file them. So, good job, Arden. Thanks. <laughs> all right, I guess we're gonna step over to the, uh, the drag saw now. Okay, this is Chuck Kincaid, and uh, Chuck goes to the steam up a lot out of Brooks, Oregon. He's got himself a nice weight old uh, uh, drag saw here. And uh, what year model is this? Oh, late 30s. Late 30s, okay. And he's gonna do a demonstration of um, they went from crosscut saw to one of these uh, drag saws, and the reason for that, Chuck, was for cord wood for steam donkeys. One person could cut much more wood with one of these in a day than you can with, with the hands. With the cross. Okay. Well, he's going to fire it up for you and show you how the mechanical thing works here. Go ahead on it. While that is cutting off this piece of wood, you were splitting the last piece of wood that come off. So there was no slack time standing around like I am. Yeah. You were always busy. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. I think it's about ready to cut on you. That's a single lung engine right there, one cylinder.
up, Chuck. Okay, so we went from the crosscut saw on the evolution, and then we went to they went to the drag saw, and then from the drag saw they went to a two-man chainsaw. So Ron Mauser and I are going to do a demonstration using the distant two-man chainsaw. distant mercury chainsaw and uh, it was some of the better ones that came out for the two-man uh, uh, chainsaw along with the McCulloch's and uh, Malls and uh, uh, Remington's and all different types so I guess the next demonstration we'll probably do is uh, we'll talk over here a little bit about the uh, different types of tools they use okay we've uh, gone from the evolution of the saw from the crosscut saw to the wade drag saw to the two-man chainsaw they also went to the big heavy one-man chainsaws, but I want to do a little demonstration and uh, what this is is called an undercutter. And what they were doing um, when they had a guy that was bucking the logs by his, himself, the guys had what they call an undercutter. What they were looking for was a way to um, make it easier for the guys. Oh, let me see here. This one here's pretty tight. Okay. So we'll do a demonstration on that. So they would throw this in like that. They would pound that in there like that. Okay. So what it was when they were cutting the saws down like this, and there were a lot of times that they had to do a, an undercut, they would put it on the old undercut like this, and see how that rolls like that? And as they went further up into the log like that, they would move the handle a little bit closer so they could get a deeper cut on the log. So that's the old, uh, that's when they were improving the undercutters. But before they did that, this is an original axe, I'll be easy on it. They took the axe right here and they used the axe as an undercutter. That's when they came out with those right there. This is an axe that was used as an undercutter, you can see the marks on it. And they would go back and forth and using the axe as an undercutter. One of the other tools that was real handy was the old PV. And they use this for rolling the big logs around. And then, uh, of course, another one of the tools was the old springboards. Now, this springboard is original. Uh, usually, uh, when a springboard rotted, the wood rotted off, and all you ended up with was a shoe. So what they would do is they would use an ax, and they would go into the tree, and they would do a notch into the tree, and they would take the shoe right here, and it's got, you see the cup on it, shove it into the tree now if they did it right it would be at kind of an angle like that so when they stood on it it was like that and there were guys that were 50 60 feet up trees with nothing but springboard after springboard they got so good at it they could lift it and hop it and, and, and change the position 
but they would do um, with crosscut saws. You, you can only go one direction with it. You couldn't do a bite. So whenever you seen a guy that was cutting on a, on a tree, and then he would ax the face out. So they would cut into the tree, ax the face out. They come around the backside and then fall the tree with no crosscut saws, standing on springboards. Quite a, quite a feat. Um, so anyways, this is uh, pretty much kind of concludes this part of the, the show right now, but um, you can take a view around and uh, look at the rest of the tools.
Nice and sharp.